Okay, so I want to start um, just by saying that I hate to be the person, and I'm sure your ears are hated as well, to show you all of that. And this is not in any way or shape or form a way for you to uh, think that this is what Israel looks like right now. However, this is the moment where we find that we cannot uh, look, look away from that um, from what's happening. And of course, post October 7, um, and in theory, when we won the judicial overall by Supreme Court ruling, we are still in the moment of uh, that, that we have to fight, uh, not just for saving Israeli democracy, but to save the soul of Israel as a democracy and liberal democracy. Uh, Yair, um, the question that was asked here by most people is, how are we, how did we arrive at a situation and where before you want to answer, I'd like to share a short video where the Prime Minister of Israel and the Israeli government are being run by people who believe in the messianic uh, philosophy. But before that, there was a question about Americans, when they hear the term messianic movement, they think about Christians for Jews. They don't really connect this term to the to the term they're familiar with in the state to hearing in, in the states. So, can you just explain what Messianic Judaism means as compared to Christian uh, Messianic movements? The Israeli Messianic, uh, the Messianic Judaism. When we say that, we mean we refer to the fact that we established the state of Israel not as a safe haven for the Jewish people, but as an instrument to bring forth redemption. People who believe in this worldview believe that the establishment of the secular liberal state of Israel is phase one, meaning what we have now is phase one en route to redemption. And the second phase will be the one in which Torah will become the constitution of the country. And then redemption will come to the people of Israel and to the entire world. In other words, they believe that the entire world, uh, they're responsible for the entire world. So this is messianism that we're talking about in Judaism, and it comprises three elements, and I'll conclude with that. For that to happen, you need, one, for the Jewish people to be settled across the entire biblical land of Israel, and secondly, for it to operate according to the Torah, a Jewish supremacy state with Torah as its constitution spanning across the entire land of Israel. This is the Jewish Messianic movement. Jewish Messianic movement is actually the outcome. It wasn't born on day one when we uh, first occupied the territories in 1967. It, it, it predates Herzl. Rabbi Cook. But today, this movement controls many budgets. I'll try to share a short video, and if I can't do it, then we'll share it with you by email later on. Over the last uh, two days, there was a huge messianic convention, which in theory could have been an esoteric right-wing event, but uh, if not for the fact that uh, the Prime Minister and many other ministers participated in it. And that demonstrates the complete disconnect between this movement and the way that most Jews in Israel and in the world uh, feel and believe. And yesterday we saw the Prime Minister uh, dancing together with the rabbi that Yael just showed here. What's the name of the rabbi? Rabbi Eli Sadan. It's the entire group. He came to the Nei David uh, Pre-Military Academy and they were dancing there. How do you 
propose for uh, the diaspora Jews to look at this? And how does this impact us in the diaspora? And what can we do to make a difference from here in order to limit their power? We need to start by, I think, that at the end of the day, we're looking at the state of Israel as our safe haven. And it doesn't matter where we live, whether we live in Israel or outside of Israel. Eventually, we know that there is this state ha safe haven called the state of Israel, and we need to safeguard this place. And we need to uh, make sure that this is a place where we can live. Now, I as an Israeli know that if this group takes over, I will not be able to live here because the liberal values, my liberal values, will not make it possible for me. Thankfully, we're at a point of time where it's still possible to, to change this course of events. I think that for a very long time, the people in Israel, even when they understood the threat posed to democracy by these people, they didn't take action because they believed it was as small as a terror group in the settlement so that it doesn't, doesn't really uh, represent any threat. Uh, because of the judicial coup, we realize that the people behind uh, behind this, the main ideology behind the judicial coup is them. Because once they destroy the values of justice and, and equality, they will be able to make sure that women don't have equal rights and homosexuals don't have equal rights and Arabs don't have equal rights, and, and that it will be possible to impose the Torah as uh, the governing law in the public sphere. So I think that this is a point of time where anyone who holds Israel near and dear has to mobilize and not to say, eh, it's going to be fine, because it's not going to be fine. But also, I don't want you to think that we've lost the battle. We haven't. There's still a lot we can do, but it needs to be done. And this past year has proven this. And I think that more than anything is what you wanted to show. What you wanted to show is that this morning, only this morning, Bibi Netanyahu was dancing there. Let, let me share it with you now. I'll share the video now. One day after the conference of the uh, right-wing messianic movement, Instead of condemning that conference, also following what the court in The Hague asked the government to do, said, the court in The Hague said, we're not asking you to cease fire, but you need to make sure that you stop making all these racial statements. Instead of condemning that conference, the Prime Minister visited Bnei David at Eli in the territories, and this is what it looked like. I want to say a few things about that. I'd like to remind you that Rabbi Eli Sadan, who was standing next to Bibi, is the founder of the of Neeli, and he was the one who spoke about how his purpose is for Torah to serve as the constitution of the state, and he's the one who talks about uh, reform conservative Jews and other similar Jews as uh, pre spreading poison. So what we saw now, this is the point where we need to look ahead and decide what is to be done. And Yair, I want you to try to explain briefly the concept that how this uh, group sees us as secular or reformed Jews as an instrument. Do they see us as an instrument? toward their final objective of transforming the state of Israel into a messianic theocracy. Because when we 
hear the term together we will win which you hear a lot in Israel and here too we contribute we want to take a part we say let's set politics aside how do we take that point of view and understand that they're actually manipulating us in order to achieve their purposes that's a key question indeed to understand their philosophy we, as liberal people, what we think is that just the same way as we respect our worldview, we respect their worldview. And being democratic people, we believe that we need to be considerate of um, minorities and allow them to operate. Their worldview, their way of thinking is completely different from their perspective. Redemption needs to come in two phases, the material phase and the spiritual phase. The material phase is the physical construction of the state, army, police, borders, hospitals. This is the physical part of it. And this physical part is called Messiah, Mashiach ben Yosef, the Messiah son of Joseph. And after this stage, after this Messiah comes and takes care of the physical aspects, then Mashiach ben David, Messiah son of David, will come and impose Torah on the physical parts of Ben Yosef. Now, why is that so important? Because when they look at liberal, secular Jewish people, actually liberal Jewish people, because they're also uh, liberal religious Jews. Uh, when they talk, look at the liberal Jews who are building the state, but not only inside Israel, also outside of Israel, because they also look at Jewish diaspora, which is assisting in the construction of the state of Israel ahead of that redemption. So when do they do that? They look at us as a type of um, Messiah, son of Joseph. So our role is very well defined to handle the material aspects until that time in which they will impose upon us Torah. And this is where Bibi uh, enters the stage. Bibi is Messiah, son of Joseph, personified. Why? Because he promotes for them the redemption. He's the one who makes sure that territories will not be given back. He makes sure that the judicial coup will go through and will enable the redemption process to go through. So when they look at anyone in the liberal stream, they see us as an instrument that is intended to serve their purpose. They don't see us as people with equal uh, thought, with equal uh, status. Well, let's take another 10 minutes for Q&A before we wrap up. Another question that we hear time and we see time and time again is the question of to what extent it, how deeply entrenched is this ideology uh, in Israeli society? Is it only among people who are Chofshe Kippah, who are Yarmulkes? Uh, not all of them, for sure. Ben Kvir, for example. Is, does it is also trickling down into the ultra-orthodox, ultra the Haredi world? Let's put it this way. I think that this group numerically may not be very big, but it's the leading group uh, ideologically, because what's happening in Israeli society, as we see in the Knesset, is that there's a battle between uh, religious groups, the ultra-Orthodox ones on the one side. They're not Messianics, but they do want the Torah to be the Constitution because they are religious, religious Haredi, and they want to live in a religious country. And uh, what ha what's happening is that this group, the Messianic group, has been successful and therein lies their, their big capability. They took their people and placed them in 
key positions in Israeli society, in the Supreme Court, at the Knesset, in the army. Their influence is tremendous and they are pulling behind them, behind them everyone else. And so even if not everyone really fully understands the Messianic worldview and where it's headed, they have been able to inculcate in Israeli society, even, I would say, hatred to the liberal uh, movement and its worldview because what they teach is that liberal worldview conflicts with Judaism. They have been able to do that, and it's that it's our job to change that. So I'd like to conclude by saying that the story of the Messianic movement in Israel is very scary indeed, but it's not uh, it's not unchangeable. It takes the many courageous leaders to stop the flow of money uh, through the government budget to these groups. But more than that, it requires us, just like we and forgive me those who uh, plan to vote for Trump, just as in the United States, we're not giving up on democracy, even though we see people believing in all kinds of things, uh, such as that Trump actually won the election or all kinds of conspiracy theories, we still need to keep on fighting in the United States and keep on fighting in Israel just the same. And we need to think where we want our money to go, where we want our time to go, and how do we make sure that this messianic movement will not impact our lives? Like we said, over the 10 months of the uh, judicial coup, everything that happens in Israel influences us overseas as well. And that's why it's important to support people like Yair, who are taking these things and are, are uh, brave enough to say them out loud, because if we're afraid to talk about it, anybody who, who will be looking at Israel will only see these messianic groups and will not see the good people who are always uh, carrying the load. By the way, uh, the soldiers, the Messianic soldiers are fighting together with uh, the secular soldiers or the non-Messianic soldiers uh, shoulder to shoulder, but their philosophy and their motivations are different. We will be sending you some of these uh, parts of these videos to you later. It's not been recorded. I'd like to thank you, David, and everybody else who's been involved, Itzik Liora, Sharon, who's interpreting for us, making it so much easier for me too. I'll let you wrap up just in, a, in one second. And from here, we're looking ahead. Uh, please do send me any comments you may have to unacceptable. Follow us on YouTube. And invite Yair and other people that we uh, invite to your forum so that everybody will have the information so that we're not blindfolded uh, against uh, from seeing what's really important. And we hope, uh, finally, we hope that the news about uh, a forthcoming hostage deal will come to fruition because as we see the messianic movement is also trying to block these kinds of deals in the government i'd like to conclude by asking uh, for something we are working almost without any support in the state of israel and as Ophir said these messages are very problematic it takes a huge effort and we will be very grateful for your support we will be very grateful if you invite us to your synagogues and anywhere you can our feeling and I think is that I speak for the entire team here is that we are on a mission here on a, call, it's a calling we're, we're uh, fighting the uh, the for the cause of the state of Israel fighting to keep Israel a liberal democracy thank you all